right, third grade, today we are making clay fish. So you are going to get a ball of clay. You're gonna pull off most of it and make a ball out of it. So the way I make a ball is I just kind of see any weird kind of lumps and then just kind of pat them with my hand to make a ball. Because this doesn't actually work very well to make a nice ball. It might if you had a whole lot of time, but we don't. So if you have any weird kind of things like this, you can just kind of smooth them out. We're just trying to make a ball to start. Okay, so now you've got your ball. What we're going to make is a pinch pot. So you start that out by pushing your thumb, as weird as it sounds, you're just gonna push your thumb through into this ball. Now you don't want it to come out the other side, but you wanna get pretty close. You wanna get pretty close to the bottom. So most of your thumb will probably be in there, right? Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your thumb and the rest of your fingers, you're gonna kind of make a claw like this and what you're going to do is you are just going to pinch around your thumb and you're just going to keep turning that ball and pinching and turning and pinching and turning and if you're noticing that the bottom is staying pretty thick don't just pinch up here you want to kind of pinch all the way down and then maybe come back up and pinch all the way around. And then once it gets big enough, you can fit two thumbs in there, you can start doing it with two hands and it goes a little bit quicker. So what you're doing with this is you're just gonna keep pinching and keep turning until you end up with kind of a small little bowl. Now I'm not quite done yet because this is still too thick. So I'm still pinching and I'm still turning. If I still feel like the back if I still feel like back here is too thick, you gotta try to pinch back there to kind of even it out. You don't want any one part to be way thicker than another part. Now you don't wanna take a whole lot of time to do this, because the more you kind of mess around with the clay, the more it tends to kind of dry out. I don't know if you can kind of see that, but the edges are getting a little bit cracked because they're getting a little bit dried out. So it's kind of over me pinching it and moving it around. So I think, I think this is pretty good. I'll try to show you about how thick it is. Once I get it all even. I'm even kind of pushing in my hand, kind of back on those thicker parts in the back kind of smooth it out and even it out. Okay, so you can see about how thick that is. It's definitely thinner than my finger, but I would say probably about as thick as your finger since maybe your fingers are a little bit smaller than mine. Now I'm just kind of smoothing it out with my finger now. Now what I like to do is I like to get my finger a little bit wet and kind of smooth out any of these cracks on the edges because if you leave those and we fire this in the kiln, which is where we put our clay to go from being this really like soft clay, even when it dries, it's really fragile. So we put it in the kiln to make it so it's that hard um, ceramic. So, but if you put it in the kiln with these little um, cracks, they will stay there and they might make it so it cracks even more in the kiln. So make sure you try to um, smooth those out, one, because it makes it look nice, but also it makes it so it's a little bit stronger. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of set it on here. And what I do, it's kind of hard to see on the video, I'm kind of gonna hold it with my hands like this. And I'm gonna kind of hold the top half of this circle so it stays in its shape. But I'm gonna kind of tap the bottom 
of my circle on the table so that it kind of makes a flat bottom. And I'll show you what I mean here. So now you can see that the top still has its round shape, but now the bottom is flat, so it'll kind of sit a little bit better. I have a, kind of a weird lump that pops off right here. I'm gonna cut that off. I'm gonna get my finger a little bit wet to smooth it out. So now I have my mouth for my fish. So now I need to start adding details. So with the rest of that clay you have, you can start making the rest of your details for your fish. So I need an eye, I need two eyes actually. So I try to get about two similar sized pieces and roll them into a ball. This one is too big. And again, just remember, clay doesn't really like to be messed with too much. So if you're taking too long to make one little piece, it's just gonna get so dried out. With clay, you kind of have to be pretty decisive and pretty quick. Okay, so those are my two eyes. Again, I know it's hard for you to see, but he's gonna look like that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bottom side of my eyeball and I'm gonna kind of scratch it up to make it rough, like that. Then I'm gonna kind of try to find where I wanna put it on my fish's head, and I'm gonna scratch up where I wanna put it. Now, this is called scoring. Scoring is really important paired with slipping. So slipping and scoring are basically the glue of working with clay. You need to do this because if you try to stick this eyeball on here like this, once it starts to dry and once we fire it in our kiln, it is just going to pop right off. It will never stay. So what you have to do is you're slipping and scoring to glue it together. So if you think about two flat pieces stuck together like this, once they dry, they might try to pull apart from each other and pop off. But if you scratch up those two spaces and then you put kind of some liquid clay, which is what the slip is, liquid clay in between, they kind of sit and meld into each other and hold tight and that's how they stay. So I've scratched them up. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of this liquid clay. Think of it like glue. You don't want so much that it's gonna ooze out everywhere. You just want enough that it will hold. So now I'm gonna stick it on there and I'm gonna kind of hold my hand inside of here while I press down on the top of this eyeball. And then if you have any that's kind of oozing out, you can do it with your finger or you can take a little tool to kind of get any of that extra clay. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with this eye. Okay, so now I have my two eyeballs attached. Now we need to kind of um, make it look like he has a pupil in his eyeball. So I'm gonna take this kind of pointed um, wooden tool and I'm just going to kind of poke that in there to give him a pupil, just like that, okay? Next, we need to start adding his fins. So, I'm gonna take a pretty good chunk of clay here. I'll set my little fishy aside for a second. And I'm gonna try, if you wanna make a flat piece, it almost works best to pinch it flat first as much as you can. And then you can take a rolling pin or even just one of these smaller little wooden tools to kind of roll this flat. Now don't make your fins too thin because we don't want them to kind of break and fall off. They have to still be kind of thick. So for 
the two fins that come off the side of my of my um, fish, I'm just gonna make kind of two little rounded top shapes with a flat end. Now I use the little needle tool to cut out things instead of the knife because I feel like I can do smaller little details with the needle tool. Okay, so I'm gonna pull those off. Then I like to take my wet finger again and I just kind of like to smooth out the edges and sometimes the canvas that we work on kind of ends up making a little bit of a weird texture. I like to smooth that out. I like for everything to look really nice and smooth. Okay, so now on that flat side, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna score it. Then you're gonna kind of decide where, let me scooch him back into here. You're gonna kind of decide where you want it to go and then kind of score there. Add a little bit of slip. Now again, this is why you need these to still be kind of thick, right? If it was too thin, it would just break right off. We don't want it to be too thin. And then I'm gonna kind of press, press that in there and kind of smooth out where it attaches to my fish. So I know that it's really, really on there well. And you can see I'm kind of pressing out from the inside and pressing down from the outside. And I'll do the same thing with this one. Okay, now I'm smoothing it out where it attaches. So there's his back fins or his side fins. Now we need to make his top fin. Now for my top fin, I kind of like to make something kind of like that. Well, let me show you what that looks like. Kind of looks like that. It looks kind of like a shark now, but when you add his tail, it makes a little more sense. So right now it kind of looks like a shark. And like I said, you don't have to make the same shape fins as me. This is, you guys can get creative on how you finish off these fish. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I kind of take my finger and smooth out the edges, smooth out that texture from the canvas that we're working on. Again, I'm gonna slip and score. Never forget to slip and score. I always know who forgets to slip and score because those are the friends whose eyeballs are popping off and fins are falling off. I know it's an easy thing to want to skip, but it is the most important part. So now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm pressing from the inside and pressing down from the outside. Super careful because we don't wanna mess up our fin. Just getting really close and then pressing down. You can see I'm smoothing out where it connects to the head. So that way it looks really, really nice and there's not an awkward seam where it connects. Okay, the very last thing we need is his tail. So the way I make the tail is I make kind of two diagonal lines like this where they kind of get skinnier and then I do jumping lines like that. That's how I make my tail. Let's see if this is big enough. Oh, it's perfect. Okay. So again, like a broken record with this, make sure you're smoothing it out so it all looks super nice these little edges. All right, now I need to slip and score. Okay. 
So there is what it looks like from the side. Here's the front, right? Now we can go through and add some texture. So on these little fins, I think I'm just gonna add some nice little lines for little fin lines, kind of like that. I'm gonna do the same thing to these fins. Now don't press down so hard that you're kind of cutting these in half. All we're trying to do is give them, give our fins a little bit of texture. This one hasn't set up as much as the other ones yet, so it's still a little wiggly. So you can kind of see, I've kind of drawn some texture onto my fins here. Now, you can also add some texture to his body. I kind of like to take either the back side of my needle tool or one of these small little tools, the same tool that we made his pupil of his eye with. And I like to just press little polka dots into my fish, just to give my fish texture. Now you don't have to do polka dots, you don't have to do any texture at all if you wanna leave your fish smooth, but you can do polka dots or you can do, oops, I made that one really deep. Um, or you can do some other kind of texture. You can draw on a cool texture to make these fish look really unique and cool. And don't forget, we're going to paint these once we put them in the kiln, once they come out and they are hard, you'll get to paint these all kinds of cool ways. So you can see I've kind of added that cool texture to my fish. Now I know sometimes people like to add a tongue or whatever. Again, you guys get to make these your own and make them look super cool. I think I'm gonna leave mine like this because I think he looks really cute. But whatever you can get done in one class period, that's, that's how much you can add to your fish. So I say keep working until um, class is over, adding some fun things to uh, your really cool fish. I cannot wait to see how you finish these guys up.